Hey folks, this is Shane from Performance EV. Today we're going to take that custom Nissan Leaf battery pack that we built up last week and we're going to hook it up to the BMS. Um, we'll see how much, if anything, I got right. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. So for those of you new to this channel, this is my project to put a Nissan Leaf motor into a Porsche 911. A lot of the effort over the last few weeks has been focused on the battery side of things. So either trying to build out the battery box um, and having to put that on pause and last week actually building out the pack itself. So we kind of got all 24 modules that make up the 40 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf battery pack. Um, and stack them into a double 12 configuration, um, one on top of the other, that we're going to use to, to get in the car. Um, now this configuration obviously is different from what Nissan had, so it is going to be a bit of a test using it in the car in the first instance, um, see what sort of heat it generates because there's not as much air movement around it as on the Leaf one, so we'll, yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. But for the moment I just need to see if I've actually done things right. And to do that, we need to get the BMS hooked up. So the BMS is basically the system that controls the battery uh, from the perspective of keeping it safe. So making sure it doesn't charge or discharge too quickly. Um, and also making sure that it's always balanced so that uh, across the entire pack, there's not too much variance between the voltages of the individual cells. So it's an important piece of kit. Um, you can build your own ones. It's not necessarily too complicated to build uh, you know, an open source one or, or get one from a, a third party company. But the fact of the matter is I've got the Leaf one here. Uh, it came with the battery, or came with the inverter. No, sorry, it came with the battery pack. <laughs> um, it was, you know, it's in there, it's bolted to the side of the batteries. And there's been a lot of work done on the Leaf over the years um, to the point where it's actually relatively, or should be relatively easy to get data out. I don't know, I haven't tried yet. Um, but yeah, so we're going to hook up the, the BMS. Uh, in order to do that, I'll probably have to get a fair bit of the other wiring out to make sure that um, it's all connected up. Um, once we've done that, we'll try and provide power to the BMS and then see if we can take some readings from it. Um, number one, to make sure it's kind of working and two, to check what state this actual battery pack's in. Um, you know, it's a, it's a new battery pack. It's only, um, it was only about six months old when I got it. So it should have a lot of life left in it, but I didn't have time um, when I first got it to, to actually spend you know, any, any time actually checking it out um, before I tore it down. I needed the space back in the garage. So I literally got the pack in, tore it down, stuck it to one side and basically stored all the components in various places around the garage. Now I wanna put that finally back together and actually see what state this battery's in. Um, so fingers crossed it'll be a good one. Fingers crossed I don't haven't screwed up anything in putting it together. And um, yeah, let's see how this how this works out. So with the physical connections done, now the next prospect is to try and get the uh, battery control module wired in. So in order to do that, I, I was trying to just track things, but it didn't really work, so I decided just to basically rebuild the loom from inside the um, inside the battery box out here, and then I'll figure out what changes I need to make. So, probably best to take you through it. So as you can see here, um, with the kind of length of various bits of wire, there's no way I can make this work while it's all kind of bundled up the way it is. Um, you know, this, this and that aren't going to be able to connect and the, the same on the other side. So need to kind of strip this back now that I know which connector is which. Um, and then we'll kind of just bundle them together more sensibly, uh, whatever makes sense for this, this battery pack that I'm building here. Uh, so let's get to it. So 
So this is going to be slow going. But interestingly, I found another um, kind of date stamp in relation to things. So it looks like this harness was made in June of last year at 4.30 in the afternoon. All right. So there we go. We've got a split up harness. So let's get this hooked up to the battery first and then we'll get look at getting it plugged into the uh, control module. So here we've got all of our BMS wiring up and running. Um, so going from the battery through into the control module and then we've got the uh, kind of signal wires and power and everything that goes out up to the kind of round main contactor thing and I'll show you what we're going to do there. Uh, that's where things get a little bit interesting. So here's our main uh, kind of contact point for getting power and everything into these. So what I've got is I've got ground running to four or to three of the points. I've got a 12 volt an ignition 12 volt and then a charging 12 volt which I probably won't use this time and then coming out of that as well we've got our can high and can low they are going up to a dodgy eBay uh, cheapest I could find uh, Bluetooth ODB2 scanner um, so that's got uh, can high can low uh, ground, signal ground, and 12 volts coming out of it. Um, we'll basically just plug things in one at a time and gradually try and build out. So the final piece of this testing puzzle is my uh, phone with an OD or some ODB2 software and LeafSpy on it. So I'm using the ODB2 software just to prove that I can actually find the scanner. Then I'll switch over to LeafSpy and see if I can get info from the BMS. So this little thing's blinking away. And I can see on the scanner here that it's trying to find some sort of signal. It's doing a search. Uh, ODB2 is actually covers a range of different protocols. So it's checking on all of these different kind of bands to see if it's getting any signals. And it's not, because I don't have anything switched on. So I'm going to jump out of this onto Leaf Spy because I don't know how long the signals from the battery control module will last, uh, given that there'll be no other CAN messages coming into it, and I don't want to miss anything. So we'll build this up, we'll get our ground attached first, then we'll attach 12 volt, see if anything comes through on that, and if not, I'll attach the ignition. All right, so I'm not having much luck with this cheapo uh, ODB2 scanner. So, so I've heard that LeafSpy is a little bit particular about um, the scanners because some of these cheap ones, basically they, they cut corners and, and there are actual bits missing, which means it doesn't always work with some of the protocols. So it, that's not gonna work, basically. I can hear electrical stuff happening inside the um, inside the unit. So what I'm going to do is I want to see is there actually CAN messages being sent out. So what I've got here is a little um, Arduino Mega with a Seed Studio CAN bus shield on it. And I've got that hooked up high and low from the CAN coming through the, the connector here. So what I'm going to do is I'll put this down to look at the computer while I start sending power through the uh, to the control module. All right, cool. So we've got data flowing through. Um, I'll have a look at this manually, see what I can figure out. I've got no way to interpret it data-wise at the moment, um, but I'm sure we can figure something out uh, while I wait for a new ODB2 scanner to appear. And by up here, I mean I've bought one, I'm just waiting for it to turn up. Thanks to the magic of Amazon, I've got a new ODB2 uh, scanner. Um, so this is a Wi-Fi one rather than Bluetooth. That actually isn't relevant, you can get good Bluetooth ones. Um, but apparently this one doesn't have the same kind of corruption or 
dodgy hacking that's gone into this one. So we're going to try and get this hooked up to LeafSpy and then see what data we get from the um, from the battery. All right, so as you can see from the screen, I'm missing a bunch of um, cells. So I can see 84 cells here and I should be able to see 96. Um, now what, I'm, what I've noticed with this now is that if you remove a single uh, BMS connector from the, the whole chain, what actually happens is that an entire block of cells will disappear. So let me show you that now. So if I unscrew one of these BMS wires, what you'll see is that the, even though we haven't unscrewed it fully, that the, the bars disappear for uh, basically three cells. So I guess that's the kind of, this is the bridge between these three and that's kind of just vanishing from the, the setup. Sorry these three that's actually vanishing from the setup I believe and if I screw it back in it returns in place so that's one potential cause for our missing um, our missing cells the other one I wanted to investigate is what happens when these um, if an entire section of cables vanishes if I take this out and pull it out like that what you'll see is that everything vanishes so to me that means that basically this the control module if something comes unstuck just doesn't you know it, it kind of gives up which is probably a safety measure if I plug them back in it'll read them again and um, everything's fine which leads me to believe that the issue that I'm seeing with these missing is wiring on the the cells rather than anything else. So I'm just going to go through, take a look at all the wiring and see if I can um, resolve it. So what I've seen through going through all this is basically this negative terminal here. Um, the uh, contact isn't properly in, in, in contact <laughs> with, the, um, with the battery itself. So I think that's probably where our misre misreadings are coming from. I'll get that wired up, but I want to um, depower the LBC, so just turn it off while I do that, just in case it causes any issues. Um, the reason why I don't have a terminal here yet is this is where a cable is going to come out or maybe a heavy duty bus bar to go out from the battery up towards the inverter, which um, will basically be where we get our power out to the car. All right, that is attached back up. So let's see what happens when we get power back into everything again. And hopefully I won't see any smoke coming from the control module. So there we go. We've got the BMS reporting data as it should, and it's pretty damn close. I, I mean, all the all the modules seem to be within about 15 millivolts of each other. Um, so the BMS should, in theory, take care of balancing and that sort of thing. I think, especially if I charge the battery up to 100% every now and then, um, that's obviously something I've got to do in the future. But the battery is in good condition. It's in really good condition and it's working. So I had a bit of a panic the first time um, when I plugged it in, so much so that I knocked the camera over so there's no real footage of it. But basically I, <laughs> I plugged in the BMS and the ODB2 scanner and all of a sudden the, um, this had stopped working and was no longer reporting any data. And I thought that maybe I'd gotten the wiring wrong and it screwed it up and it was all going terrible. <laughs> but then I realized that uh, I just I knocked one of the CAN wires out from the uh, the ODB2 thing. So lesson learned, I need a proper way to wire all this up together because this ain't going to be feasible in the long run. Um, but yeah, it's, it's there, it's working. Uh, battery's got power, so I'll tidy up the wiring. Um, and then when we get close to putting it in the car, I'll start to work out the 
and I know where things like the inverter are going to be specifically, I'll work out where this high voltage junction box needs to go, where um, a few other things need to need to sit. Um, and then that'll figure out like the final internal wiring, both of the uh, the kind of the power coming from the battery and the um, the module itself, whether I'm where I end up housing it finally, if it goes back where it was initially or if it goes somewhere else. Um, but yeah, that's it's there. It's working. It's great. So there we have it. We actually have a working battery um, and it's got 50 percent charge or so, which is pretty awesome. Um, seems in really good health. I didn't blow up the BMS, even though I did have a bit of a scare uh, part way through. Um, but yeah, everything seems to be there. So what, what I've got planned now is basically just um, kind of tidy everything up. So get the wires for the BMS, all those tiny little wires, all 96 of them, something like that, um, wired up properly. So they're actually rooted in a sensible manner. I'll then kind of wind them up in electrical tape, make sure they're really neat, um, figure out where I'm going to put the BMS. So I'll basically take that wiring apart as well, get it nice and neat and do the same thing and then put this to one side. Uh, so this is ready to go basically now to be put in the car, but I want to get the battery box in first. I've got finally gotten the metal that I was waiting for. So I'll be able to build out um, that supporting frame, supporting slash mounting frame that I had envisaged um, and get it attached to the base of the battery box. And then we'll build the rest of the box around that, test fit it in the, leaf, in the Porsche, um, take it back out, get all the mounts in place and then put this pack inside it before installing it properly. So lots of back and forth due out, but it was really cool to see that, you know, this, this pack does actually work. It's got the power that I need and it's ready to go. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Um, if you have and you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. If you've got any comments, please drop them in the comment section. I do try and respond to as many of them as I can and I really appreciate them. Um, but yeah, till next time, thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon.